action. We shot an 80 page feature in the span of seven days. Typical indie feature film shoots for around $5 million. And the ones that you've definitely seen shoot between 150 to $250 million. And let's have a good day. So we shot this for the price of like people's lunch. So in this video, I wanna talk about how to make a film from start to finish, take you on set, but also bring you into the post-production process of how we piece together this feature film, Sway. James Drayton. Also known as Sway. Welcome to EQ's 40 Under 40. Anybody found my brother here? No, no one's got a single lead on. So what is this about? It's about the bookie. Now the process of making a film starts with the script and the simplest way to go through that is to break down page by page, creating the visual language. How is this going to feel when you watch it? As a director, you're looking at it in sort of like a half opacity or blurry image. And that's okay. You bring collaborators on the project to almost sharpen that image. So if you could just see like a blurry image when you're reading the script and you kind of know where the character is going to be and how it's going to place together, it, it, you're doing your job right. Ooh. And action. What is it? Who's it? Most of them from your house. When you go into making your first proper movie, I'm assuring you imposter syndrome will be a very prevalent symptom. We know it's Psy in this moment when it's the close up, or yeah, we just know it's another phone now call? We know, now we know it's Psy. Now, the biggest directing tip I would say for when you're shooting a film, I learned this when we were doing Sway, is you don't need to know the whole film, meaning you're just shooting scene by scene. And the best way to compose it is what happened before this, what happens after this, and what's the significance of this scene? The actor, cinematographer, anyone in that space doesn't really need to know the entire story leading up to that moment or the entire story happening after that moment. They just need to know the bread on the top and the bread on the bottom, and what is the meat in the middle that you're currently shooting, and then everything else can kind of fall off the sides. Way easier to film it. Our film opens with this cool one take where it follows our main character. It's also our opening credit sequence. And what we wanted to do was to create this like disoriented uh, sort of feeling. We also wanted to establish the entire set. So the audience knew where the film was taking place. So we had this idea of doing it on a, a steady cam and then a dolly and then overcomplicated, overcomplicated. And then on the day that it came to, I just shot it on my gimbal by putting it into like the POV mode and just following uh, a manual around the house. We blocked it with you shooting it on my cell phone to begin with, which I'd recommend. Always bring out your cell phone because it will capture angles way faster than bringing a big camera out. And what you're gonna feel is more creativity than any other rig. So at the end of each day, when we were prepping for the next, I would bring out my phone and Charlie and I would figure out the frames for the scenes that we were gonna shoot the following day. So pre-shooting just a little bit on our phones and then that gave us a bit of an idea of how these things were gonna play out. And the shitty thing about one takes is the same shitty thing about shooting wides is that when you're filming it, everyone has to tuck into a corner. So when we shot this one take, Everyone was off to one corner, but it ended up looking great, and it's what establishes the film and creates a cool style. So it is about money. You bet with what you have, and he didn't. Now we shot the exact film that independent filmmakers should make as their first movie. Should, it should is a big word, but it's called a contained movie. In our case, it was a contained thriller. Now, when you're pitching or going to studio execs or trying to get money or even shooting something on your own, making it contained is really important, which means your entire film sort of happens in one space. And it sounds easy. It is still just as complicated as moving around. My first feature film was a zombie apocalypse movie where every day was a new location and they were like closing down streets, bringing hundreds of extras out. And what that did was it distracted me from dialing in on my craft, which is creating emotion within that space. And more, I was focusing on spectacle. Versus when you shoot something contained, you're allowed to dial in on performance, lighting, blocking, and most importantly, that will help shape your story. So sometimes spectacle, just like in Hollywood films, can override story. And I would suggest your first project make it contained like what we did with Sway. 
he's gonna come by the window, but what we're gonna do is just shoot at the sitting stuff. So basically what's gonna happen is we're just gonna shoot them sitting, yeah. burn through the whole scene. Whenever he stands up, we're just gonna fast forward that part just so Got we can it. shift in this angle. Try and find a good location. Here's what I would look for when it comes to a space for a contained film. Having lots of areas for light to come in. So anywhere that's dark, try and think, okay, could I fit a cool practical in here, whether it's a lamp. So what we did was we had like an Astera tube in the bathroom to create the bathroom light, or we just shot by these windows. So that was an easy practical, or we found cool lighting spaces, cool lamps and lighting. If you're not going to have good lighting, you're gonna be a lot harder off making the scene feel good. My next spot is have texture. So the windows created texture when we shot against them. The ceilings were like these cool exposed concrete and the angles that didn't feel the best were the ones when we were shooting towards the white walls and we had to like put our production design up which turned out great but when you're working on a budget and production design doesn't have a lot of money to work with, you're not gonna work with the best items to put in the background. So have absorbent light texture on your production design, like darker walls, concrete, or just using the practicals for us would be like the cityscape in the background or the patio with the city in the background. That helped us out a lot with our design. Big thing that I talk about all the time, but it is something to be aware of, is your wardrobe too. If you think about a movie, 90% of the film is following a character. 80% of your character is wardrobe. So therefore, 80 to 90% of your movie is a costume of some sort that fills up a third of the frame. If you don't have a nice location, you can always combat that with cool wardrobe. And that's what we did with this. Our main character, Sway, wore this suit, which gave him a lot of character behind him. But then when we do these flashbacks, when he's like, in the past, we changed this wardrobe to feel more rugged and it shows diversity within character, within frame and tells a story better than any sort of cinematography because you don't have to say anything and you can tell a whole story about someone based off of what they wear. You might be watching this and thinking that filmmaking is overwhelming. And what I want to share with you is that it doesn't have to be. If you're a filmmaker who's working with a limited budget, limited location, or limited gear, then I highly recommend taking a look at this course we're growing. The four week filmmaker is the limitless style of filmmaking, using what you have and amplifying those resources to tell better stories. You've heard the story before, the best camera is the one that's always with you, but so is the best story, resources, props, locations, and actors. You just need to source them out. And after working on this feature film, several short films, and growing out an entire online brand, I feel like I've dialed in this craft of implementing three different styles into one. That's documentary, YouTube creativity, and narrative filmmaking blending it together into a formula I like to call hybrid. You can just sign up, plug your email in, and you'll be notified for when the course drops. You know what I've learned about doing this job? You can beat a man into a coma, into a wheelchair, help you early retirement. But a couple of months later, they'll be back and knocking at your door with a gun, trying to get you back for the arse we you gave them. Let's talk about the lighting of this film because there were some fun tricks that we did. Now, when we shot this film, we did a location scout and checked out all those sort of preliminary angles we could shoot before actually shooting it. And what we noticed is we had a beautiful light coming in from the window and that was gonna be what we'd have to play off of for the film. But for us to build intensity throughout the scene, we knew we couldn't change the exterior light. So to change the interior light, we amplified the negative fill on the one side of the characters throughout the movie to amplify the intensity. So when the film starts, we shoot light side going on the characters and it was like, things are light and easy. But as the intensity builds, we change the fill on the one side to getting closer and closer to build more shadow and therefore create more depth. So Charlie had this great idea of changing the light color when our main character is on the phone, sort of the way a stage play would when it would isolate a character on stage. So what we did was he had, we had this nice soft translucent wall that we had uh, light on the outside and then on certain lighting cues and in certain moments we changed the tone. And therefore it actually diversifies the palette of the entire film. And this was something else we landed in. When you make a movie, if you have different lighting changes or color grade changes that change the overall tapestry of the movie, meaning like that palette, what you're gonna notice is it makes it feel like there's more things happening than there actually is. When you stick to one look throughout a whole film, there's nothing wrong with it. Some of the best movies out there have one look throughout it. 
But what I always want to do is if I scrub through a movie fast, is it going to look different when I zip through it? And one of the best ways to do that is textured lighting. If you guys want to look at more on set stuff for how we shot Sway, I actually have a few videos that I'll uh, put in the description below, which you can take a look at on how we did it. Um, but now I want to move into the post-production because this is where the film got interesting. After we had shot our preliminary scenes over the span of one week, we had about three pickup shoots to where we grabbed a couple little extra uh, nooks and crannies and detail shots, and then we were into post-production. Our, our, our editor, Sydney Cowper, pieced together the feature in the span of, I think, a month, and then we moved it off to post-production house. Now, I'm very grateful for all the collaborators that we had, and I want to share the process of piecing this together. The first one, which is shooting on three different cameras. Not everyone has the luxury of doing this, but we got to shoot on the Alexa 35, the Alexa LT or RF or Alexa Mini, I think, and then we shot on the Sony FX3. Three very different cameras, and especially the FX3 and Ari. And I was amazed at what the colorist was able to do as far as matching the cameras. In fact, even now I forget which one is which when I watch the film. It's to destroy the man's soul. You can't imagine the nightmare I have planned for you if you don't roll over on your back and pay the fuck up. Want to know the Go walk into your bathroom and look at the fucking mirror. Our <laughs> colorist would say something very different about the coloring. He was not happy having to match the cameras, but at the end of the day, they worked well. I don't recommend bouncing between them. Just stick to one brand. But he was even having trouble matching the 35 with the other RE camera, both being very expensive cameras. So having one brand makes it easier. It's not always necessary, though, as you can tell by the final image. I want to talk about uh, creating the look of our film. Now, Charlie and I had this image of a palette in our head and we came into it came into it while sort of coming up with the concept of the movie. I threw Lutz on when we were shooting in our proof of concept stuff that we shot on our location scout. We tried creating this like gold orange tone. So we knew that the vast majority of our film was going to have this look which then that translated into post-production. If you're able to have an idea of what your film's gonna look like before you go shoot it, like that's amazing. And that's what we had. Our preliminary interior footage would be yellow, like this goldy yellow look. And then our uh, exteriors would be this cool blue. And then flashbacks would either be like an uh, orange uh, nostalgic vibe or be red, which each color had a significance. And we were able to tell our story through color palette. Now, this was done practically on set, uh, having like lights come in with color, and then also was figured out in post-production. Today we are in a post-production house called Red Lab, and I wanna give you guys a bit of an inside scoop of what it looks like to make these movies at a post-production house. This is how real men drink coffee. Half sugar, half milk. A little, little, bit of, little bit of coffee for color. 90% done. The nerves is like, okay, you know, is it, is it gonna be well received? That's, and is it gonna find a home? We're getting the dream treatment of being directors behind a monitor. We're getting lost inside the space here, trying to figure our way out. I think the Manny puts it so well. The, this part of the process is now just like, our movie's done, and now we're trying to find a home for it. And it's like we've got this excellent little film, but uh, it's almost just as daunting as going into production because we're stepping into the territory of unfamiliar, but we're now doing post sound with Brie, and it's so exciting. Look at this place. The best time ever is sound design. I always forget the importance of good sound, and our sound designer, Brie, completely knocked it out of the park. I just want to give a big thanks to her because she's it's so amazing. And we were like kings, like people who make movies, like you, you, you picture like Mad Men with like the guys in suits, drinking drinks, smoking cigars, and like looking over someone's shoulder as they work. That's what it feels like in these post houses. I was a complete imposter because I'm typically the person who has someone over their shoulder breathing. And we were the breathers. We were breathing over Brie's shoulder. We just finished up doing our second day of post-production on Sway. I always forget how important the post-production process is to a film and it takes it to that next level. And like walking down the hallway in this place, it's like all these TV shows and movies that I've grown up watching or seeing are like the people who have worked on our film, which is insane. Zach, you know where the garbage is? 
And some of the key features that we did with sound design were creating auditory motifs. And that's sort of what you are doing within post sound with your sound designer. They'll pretty much cover the basics where it's like footsteps or this like sort of movement and this thing, you know, your average auditory sounds they're able to pick up. But what you're working with in the space with either an editor, colorist, or post sound person, or even a composer is the artistic tweaks that make the film feel like its own thing. So we had different sound effects that we played with, whether it was reverbs, swells, different echoes, and it overall created this tone on the movie that I think made Sway feel the way it does. Uh, today's the day where we watch everything kind of pieced together. It's the most exciting day of the post-production process. And it's the day that I think Charlie and I have been thinking of since we started shooting. Lots of words, lots of excitement. I think the most inspiring thing about filmmaking and the online space is that there's not one way to do something. Meaning you can go shoot a feature film and film it all handheld, or you can shoot with a gimbal that's swirling around. And I think what I learned within this process is to go, that going against tradition, once you know how to do everything basically, is a fun exploration, especially when there isn't a lot of pressure. This film just started as a snowball that started to roll and turn into an avalanche. But that snowball had no money, no secured finances, not a long list of actors or big producers, big cameras, anything. It was all assembled by passion and being made no matter what. And I think when it comes to your projects, just think about that. Don't think about all the things you don't have or else you're just going to be stopped in your tracks right at the get-go. Instead, think about how can I get this made and how can I just and just be relentless with it getting made. And I promise you, you'll see it on the big screen and you will work with things that were uncomprehendable in the current moment of conceptualizing it. And I hope you get to see Sway at some point. We're hoping to get it on Netflix or Amazon Prime or something. We're in that whole fun process, which I'll share with you guys about. So uh, feel free to join me on that journey by hitting some buttons below. You can also support this channel by either taking a look at my course, Four Week Filmmaker, where I dive deeper into how we make these types of projects uh, on a shoestring, and I can share more about budgets and the creative process beyond what YouTube can provide. So go take a look at Four Week Filmmaker. You can sign up below. Thank you for all your support. Absolutely love you guys. And uh, stay tuned for more Sway stuff, I hope. But if not, there's also some other cool, fun projects that are on the way. Oh my God, I'm so excited. I'll see you guys later.